Good morning. Welcome to Out Morning Devotion. Glad you are tuned to the Morning Encounter. It is our prayer that you will encounter with God through this broadcast. And now, let's welcome the servant of God. Good morning again, my dear listeners. I want to take this opportunity again to just invite you for this morning devotion. Yesterday we met here, and I was talking about what Jesus came to do and to teach. And today I want to continue with the same series. I was asking this question, what is this aspect of turning the world upside down? And yesterday I talked about the kingdom of God and the spirit of God. But today I want to talk about the church in the beginning. It's important for us to understand the church in the beginning. Allow me to read for us this scripture in the book of Acts chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Then I'll just share something briefly as I pray for you this morning in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. The Bible says, They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked each other. Verse 13, But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, they are just drunk. That is all. A very interesting scripture about the beginning of the church. When the Spirit was poured upon the church, the crowd asked, what does this mean? In Peter's response, we can identify the main characteristic of apostolic teaching to the Jews. And I'll be giving us three response of Peter and then we are going to pray together because when the church begins doing what it has been called to do sometimes people cannot understand and Peter responds by saying we are living in a new dispensation the Bible talks about the last days in a new era of God's dealing with men it is the new covenant age the time between the first and the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ as for, foretold by Joel. Joel spoke about the, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ when the Holy Ghost will come and fill the people. So we are living in a new dispensation where the Spirit of God is moving and touching lives, touching people, touching young and old in a special way. And the second thing I see Paul responding is the message is Jesus. As Paul speaks to these people, Paul is telling them, guys, don't be shocked about this. The message is Jesus. And I was perplexed when I look at this scripture. Paul is saying that Jesus' life on earth was confirmed by God through miracles, signs, and wonders. His death was the result not only of the wicked actions of men, but the foreknowledge of God and his predetermined plan. It is God's way of salvation. Jesus coming into the planet earth, he came basically to save that which is lost. He rose from dead and uh, is now alive, seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. And looking at the scripture, you know, the Jewish tradition says truth must be established by at least two witnesses. And this is clear in the scripture. It was predicted in the scripture. It was attested by witnesses. If you look at verses 30 and 31 and 32, you'll see this coming out very, very clearly. He was exalted to God's right hand. Only this explain the outpouring of the Spirit. Look at what the Bible says in verses 33 and 35. This explains the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And Paul's come and give the conclusion in an appeal to his listeners. He says there's only one conclusion. As we talk about the beginning of the church, church in the beginning, he says God has made Jesus both the Lord and Christ. That is in verses 36 of chapter 2. He says, So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made these Jews whom you crucified to be both the Lord and the Messiah. Note the contrast between the way he was treated by man 
and by God. God treated Jesus differently. Men crucified Jesus. No message is Christian unless it is based upon the life, the death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. My dear listeners, this morning, I want to encourage you to know that the message is Jesus. The death and resurrection of Christ is a message we cannot run away from because God is doing great things. No guilt is greater than theirs, yet even this can be forgiven. And this morning, I want to tell you it can be forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. And as I conclude this morning, I want to say, looking at the message that Peter shared at Pentecost, this is an example of the message of the early church. It is called the kagima or the proclamation. The same basic elements in other sermon in ask. The primary points, as I pray with you, is that the Old Testament, and listen to me, my listener, very well. The Old Testament promises are fulfilled and a new dispensation is here with us in the name of Jesus. God brought this about through the life, death, and resurrection of the Messiah, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. His death was foreordained by God and his resurrection is God's authentication of him. Hallelujah! God has exalted Jesus to his right hand, where he is the Lord of all. In Christ, God offers salvation to all who believe. Probably you are listening to me this morning and you are not born again. I want to challenge you as we look at this message that Paul is giving in the book of uh, Acts. As Luke is explaining certain things, I want to tell you in Christ God, we see salvation being offered to all that believe. If you are here and you believe in this Jesus, because the message is Jesus, if you believe in this message, your life will never be the same again. Allow me to pray with you this morning in Jesus' name. And I know your life will never be the same again because Jesus died and resurrected and now he's seated in the right hand of God. Let's pray together in Jesus' name. Our Heavenly Father, the great I am, I thank you for reminding us about the church in the beginning. And Lord, what God you did through your church. I want to thank you for the response Paul is giving us this morning. The Lord Jesus is a message that the conclusion of everything is that God, you made Jesus both the Lord and Christ. And Father, I want to pray for my listeners that you're blessing them and you're taking care of their lives. Those who are not born again, may you touch them this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are prayed. And may the people say, Amen and Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed day. As we meet again tomorrow, the same time, the same place, I know God is going to minister to you. God is going to speak to you in Jesus' name. That was The Morning Encounter. We are glad that you tuned in. Follow us on YouTube at Sidham Eldoret TV. Our Facebook page is Sidham Eldoret. Our Twitter and Instagram handles at Sidham Eldoret. And our website is eldoret.sidham.org. Let's encounter again tomorrow morning, same time, same place.